we're looking at how to apply architectural 3D printing and 3D machining to produce sort of pieces of recreated archaeology. There are two photographic techniques, reflected transformation imaging and multispectral imaging, which allow us to see, if you like, beyond the vision of the human eye. They are also useful when making 3D models um, that give you a full 360 degree view of the object. You then translate that model into an engineering style model used as the input to the 3D machining system. And then they will be assembled as a sort of giant jigsaw puzzle. Palmyra, provincial capital of ancient Rome, once 300,000 people lived here where these lonely stone pillars rise from the desert today. Within the last few minutes, we've learned from opposition activists in Palmyra that the entire city has now fallen. IS militants have damaged, destroyed and plundered ancient sites in territory they've seized. <laughs> Islamic State militants have blown up the historic Arch of Triumph in Palmyra, which was considered one of the jewels in the collection of ruins at the Roman era site. We heard about the threats to Palmyra as everybody else did, as the army advanced and as the site was taken in the spring of last year. We've been working in this area, so looking at endangered archaeology for quite some time. So. We have a project which is to produce a large-scale replica of the Triumphal Arch from the Palmyra site in Syria. In a way, copies are nothing new and we've been producing copies of architecture and art uh, for centuries. Uh, we're sitting here in the Cast Courts, which is a 19th century example of a moment when uh, museums were creating a lot of copies through plaster casting. This was done out of a really practical idea, which was uh, most people couldn't afford to travel across Europe to see great works of art. So instead, it was much more practical to bring something like Trajan's Column, which is right here, um, to the people of Britain. I think that it is very important that we respect concepts like authenticity, that when somebody visits an archaeological site, they know what that, uh, you know, one particular part of it is completely original, another piece has been, you know, reconstructed. We would never claim that a reconstruction is as good as the original. It's intuitive that there is something very special about an original object, that the feelings of awe, for example, when we visit large buildings, the sense of the physical space, the acoustics of the physical space, these are all things that are special to the actual existence of an object. Um, and I'm not sure that it necessarily has to be the original object for those experiences to be had. What happened in the 20th century is that copies started to take on a negative connotation. And I think we very much still have this attitude towards copies today. One thing that's really important to understand in preservation is that all uh, great monuments, all old buildings, are basically uh, undergoing a process where essentially they're constantly reproducing themselves. So in a large monastery, if a door uh, starts to wear away, you'll replace the door. Thank you very much everybody for coming along this afternoon. We're here today in solidarity with the people of Syria, we are here in the spirit of defiance. Defiance of the barbarians who destroyed the original of this arch and they've destroyed so many other monuments and relics. Congratulations to the Institute of Digital Archaeology. How many digits do you think Daesh deserve? I think two digits to Daesh from the Institute of Archaeology and the Institute from London. And it is with great, great pleasure, therefore, that I hereby unveil the oldest new structure in the history of this city. Ladies and gentlemen, the Triumphal Arch of Palmyra. Three, two, one. Copying works of art has never been easier through 3D fabrication and 3D scanning. 
uh, all you need is basically a smartphone and the ability to take 40 pictures of an object and feed it through some software and you can create a relatively faithful uh, 3D model of that object. We see ourselves as people with um, potentially an enabling technology and a willingness to help. I personally feel very strongly that we should not allow hostile groups um, of any kind to define the apparent cultural background of uh, a nation, of a country, of any kind of site. One of the reasons museums began as an act, or as an institution, was to safeguard objects from things, specifically iconoclasm. So iconoclasm is nothing new. It's not really a, a matter of whether or not we should copy, it's really a question of how do we copy. I was shocked, sad, depressed and worried, same as everybody else. But instead of writing something, uh, because it's not my language, I drew something.